So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Roma Theory because today we're talking about a potential exchange, a potential swap uh, between us and Torino when it comes to Lukic improving our midfielder and exchanging Lukic with Kumbula, who is one of the players which Torino um, is very interested in and has been interested in um, since quite a long while. Also, today is a very big day because today Genie Wijnaldum is back playing football not in a match not in a friendly game not with the academy team today is a day to remember because genie got back training with a ball in trigoria there have been some insane images some images which have been the best images of the season so far when it comes to genie on roma's official instagram page so make sure to go watch them to go just like them all because it's so good to see genie back and massive 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 updates on the genie situation because genie is has in fact because the team has landed in Portugal Genie's there Genie's on that plane and Genie is in Portugal we'll train with the team in this pre-season half season let's call it what does that mean that means that I think and I'm gonna I'm actually hoping for an early call up when it comes to Genie I'm not expecting anything spectacular I'm not expecting Genie to start the 4th of January against Bologna but I definitely expect the call up and if things go well then I definitely expect good news when it comes to the matches after that so um really really important news on that behalf and also when it comes to the preseason, there's also some big updates when it comes to the cars dop. Now, it's quite of a surprise and all of that, but before we get into the cars dop situation, uh, let's talk about this Lukic Kumbula swap because this is actually something which, um, that you know, the possibilities of seeing this happen are growing um, because Torino are very interested in Kumbula. Now, Torino have been interested in Kumbula for quite a long while. Torino were one of the teams which were interested alongside us, Lazio and Inter Milan when it comes to buying Kumbula in the first place from Hellas Verona. They've always kind of prepared a radar for, um, for Kumbula. They think Kumbula can be the big man um, for their defence. Obviously, they did sell Bremer last season. They are lacking quality in defence lately. And I think... You know, it could be argued that they need Kumbula and it could be argued that we need Lukic. Now, one thing which we definitely need is depth in the midfielder because, you know, Matic, again, I, I'm, I've said this already, Matic won't be able to play every game. Cristante has shown how easily tired he gets. Genie obviously will be back, but won't be the prime genie which we were awaiting for at the start of the season. Kamara lay, you know, Kamara is, is there, uh, but Kamara obviously is not the only one. So the more squad depth we have in the midfielder, the I think the the better. Because I think you you allow more rotations. And I've said this already, but I'm going to say this again. The only, not the only reason, but one of the big reasons of why in these last game weeks in the Serie we've lost so many points from the derby onwards. So against Sassuolo, against Torino, is because of fatigue. You know, these players have been playing an average of two to three games every week to satisfy the demands of this Winter World Cup. Therefore, and it, it just really explains that having three players for every position is not really enough. You need as many players as possible. Lukic, I've already discussed how I like Lukic because of his aggression, because of his personality. Uh, I've seen the few games which he played for Serbia. By the way, Serbia, Serbia was really disappointing in the World Cup, you know. I actually had really high expectations for, um, for, for Serbia, but Serbia really managed to bottle it. They were in a tough group stage. They were with Brazil, if I'm not wrong, but I expected something better from Serbia. But uh, still, I remember the first game Serbia played, which was against Brazil, and Lukic blockaded ne Neymar in, in a really good way. And I think, again, we need a player like Lukic. We need a player with, with Lukic's, aggre Lukic's aggression. And... Um, I think also 
one thing which we have to do is we have to get rid of players which we don't need. Now, don't get me wrong. Kumbula can be useful. But Kumbula is very fragile. And also, I don't think Mourinho really likes him. I think Kumbula is one of those classic non-Mourinho type players. Slow on the ball, not very aggressive, not much personality. I think, because you see, a few years ago when we bought Kumbula, he had a lot of competition. Many clubs were interested in him. And it, it, many big clubs in the area were interested in him. So Kumbula has definitely prospect. But he hasn't shown this at Roma. And this is the reason why I think I think it's not working with, with Jose. Now we've seen him a few times. We've seen him, you know, the big match, which we all remember, was the sixth one against Sporto Glimt. And you see, he didn't play well. There's just something about Kumbula's characteristics, which I don't think Jose likes. And, you know, Jose can like every single player. Because if Jose was going to like every single player, the way every single player played, then... It would be too easy. He definitely has players which he prefers. He definitely has players which he doesn't prefer. Uh, for example, another one of these players was Villar. Villar, I think, is an incredible player. I think he's such a Spanish type of player in a way that he loves Tiki Taka. He loves playing with his feet and all of that. But he's just a non Mourinho type of player. And that's why he got loaned out. And that's why. Under Jose, we'll probably not see Villar play for Roma ever again. Therefore, the same is happening with Kumbula. Don't get me wrong. I think unlike Villar, if we sell Kumbula, we don't sell him on a loan, but we sell him on a permanent move. I think we can get quite a lot of money from it. If we get around 12 million for Kumbula, it's a win-win. Uh, 12 million for a player who has been injured quite a lot lately who hasn't been playing much football in general because of the amount of game time he received, I think you're adding 12 million to a really good budget. So at the end of the day, I think we have players which we have to sell. And I mean, we have other players, not just uh, Kumbulo. I think another player which we have to sell is Vinha in the long term. I'm not saying we have to sell him in January, but we definitely have to sell him this summer. Uh, another player which we can sell, which we can make quite a lot of profit from, is Clivert. And in fact, Valencia are really into buying Clivert on a permanent move. And apparently, if Valencia buy him on a permanent move, we'll actually get quite a lot of money from it. And that, again, adds money to your budget. Another player which I think will be sold in the next couple of years will be Shimorodov. I don't see Shimorodov... I don't think Jose likes Shimorodov. And let me think of other players... Um, El Sharawi has got a question mark. So you see, we have to kind of clear, make space. Wow, it's wow, there's a massive thunderstorm. Can you hear it in the background? It's relaxing though. Rain sound in the background, but it's pouring it down. Um, so yeah, I think we have to clear, we have to make spaces, and therefore, the more players we sell, the more players will come in, and therefore, leading to Jose being more satisfied. Because it's fair to say that Jose picked up this team. I'm not saying in a mess, but it was hard. You know, we had, I mean, just to put it into parenthesis, if we hadn't sold, sold anyone in these past years, our team would look like Alisson in goal, Rudiger in defense, Manalas in defense, Nine Galan, uh, which in fact has spoken yesterday saying how Monchi and Palota have ruined this club and how Monchi and Palota, he can't even name these names. He, he, he said this in, a, in an Instagram live. Um, we would have Pjanic, we'd have Mo Salah, we'd have Paredes, we'd have an unreal team. If you have an ownership which has these players, sells them all, and then you bring in a manager who, in his team, has tough players to work with. You see, you need time to rebuild. And there are still players which I don't think, which I think Jose wants away. So, um, so that's, definitely, that's definitely something to consider. But I think, you know, the chances are increasing to see this swap happen. Um, I think 
maybe money will be added onto this as much as the two players can swap. I think maybe a bit of money can be can be invested in this deal as well. But I mean, we'll see how it happens. Lukic is definitely one of our biggest objectives. We've been saying this for weeks now. I think Mourinho likes Lukic, um, and I I see Lukic. And also one thing which I forgot to say, which is very big when it comes to Lukic, the um, Torino sporting director yesterday or a few days ago, has released an interview saying, these are the exact words, saying, Lukic staying will be useless for the club. Lukic is going to leave. He broke up with the uh, ownership. Something happened between him and Torino. So it's definitely making things e easier. It's facilitating things. But again, we'll see, how it ha we'll see what happens, um, which, um, which uh, will be definitely something to mention. Because um, I think I think he can be a good addition to the midfield, especially adding on, adding on to the players we already have, which is important because we don't lack midfielders. We lack creative midfielders, but in general, we don't really lack midfielders. We've we've got midfielders. Obviously, I'm not saying they're amazing. Um, we can always improve, but you know we have we have we have the players. But the more you add the better it will be. So yeah, this is definitely the, um, the transfer update of today. Now, I want to quickly speak about who left for Portugal, who didn't leave for Portugal, uh, because there have been quite a few surprises. Ow. Ow. Bloody hell. I just... Ah. Fuck off. I just kicked... Ah. I swear these live streams are crime scenes. I swear I get injured every time I go live. I just kicked the table with my foot. That's, ow, that's a stinker. Right, oh, that hurts. Anyways, who left, who stayed in Rome? It's very simple. We had doubts of who was gonna leave, who was gonna stay. The big three doubts were on three, on, on just three players. Wijnaldum, Belotti, and Korsdorp. Wijnaldum has passed the test. Medicals, doctors has, have basically allowed him to go. Um, his recovery is going really well. Really, really well. Now, at the end, I mean, realistically speaking, will we see Wijnaldum even get subbed in for two minutes in these three friendly games coming ahead? No, and it would be a really big mistake to do so. What Wijnaldum has to do now is, is not think about playing games, it, it is train with the team. Because he hasn't been training with the team much. And we know how players need to work together for them to perform in better ways. So Wijnaldum is in Portugal. The team has uh, landed a few, a few hours ago, if I'm not wrong. Uh, tomorrow is our first friendly game. So yeah, Wijnaldum is there. Second, that was Belotti. Yesterday, everyone was saying Belotti is not going to leave because he, he had an injury in these last training sessions. Belotti also left. So it means that there have been updates when it comes to his injury. He's probably not going to play any of these games. But still, it's good for him to leave. If he, if he feels like he can leave with the team, then it's good that he's doing so. So, yeah, Belotti has left, which is good. It's another good thing because no one was expecting this. And then the last weird thing where we should focus on more is Korstop. Yes, our good old friend Korstop. It's been a while, but we're really at that stage where you're like, what the hell is going on with Korstop? What the hell is going on with this situation? It's so unpredictable. One day we read how Jose really doesn't want to work with him anymore. One day we read how he doesn't want to leave for Portugal. Today we read the revolution. Korsdop has left for Portugal. What are we supposed to believe? Like, and I don't know if it's how the media works. I don't know if there's something which we don't know which happened between Mourinho and Korsdop. I struggle to believe that with a manager like Mourinho, with a player who didn't want to leave for Portugal, 
I struggle to believe how he has ended up on that plane. But what I what what what, what I think it needs to be suggested is that there has been a secret meeting between Marino and Carlos. You, you can't explain it otherwise. You genuinely can't explain what's happening otherwise. Because, I don't know, he, he's basically said he doesn't want to leave for Portugal. The manager said he doesn't want to work with him anymore and he's on the plane flying to Portugal. And yesterday, he was on an Instagram picture with the winning team of the training session. I mean, what are we supposed to believe here? It's just so hard to predict. I mean, it's so easy to go from one side to the other, but unfortunately, this situation is exactly this. I mean, a few days ago, I was saying how there was no chance of seeing Korsdorp be being reintegrated in the team. Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually saying, I'm actually saying to you that I think it is very possible that Korsdorp is gonna get reintegrated in the team. Because otherwise, I can't explain this situation. I mean, I'm not joking. You see, it, it, it makes me want to laugh because you kind of look at this and you're like, why the hell did it happen? But then you can't explain it. So I think now Mourinho is considering Korsdorp staying until the end of the season. What, what I really will struggle even more to believe is that if he stays at the end of the season and then he doesn't get sold in the summer. If he doesn't get sold in the summer, then it means, I don't know, he surprised Mourinho with a new car. Because I just don't know where this, that, which direction this situation is picking up. So, I mean, it, it's a situation which can change anytime soon. According to this plot, which has literally been like a sequel of Escape from Alcatraz. I wouldn't be surprised if once landed in Portugal, Corsdor picks up a plane, a private jet and flies away. But because you see, we can't predict what happens. So as things stand, Corsdor is in Portugal and Corsdor is making Mourinho rethink about his position Korsdorp is making Mourinho rethink about him blasting him out. And maybe it could also be said that Korsdorp is trying to surprise Mourinho and maybe make him look better. So, I, I don't know, but I mean, how this situation will evolve, I'll update you guys with. But I mean, there is definitely something which has happened. I, I just... There, there has been a secret meeting, which luckily the media isn't aware about. Because one of the mistakes that the club has made is making this situation public. Yes, okay, blasting a player pu pu publicly is something, but then carrying the entire situation publicly is, is, is wrong. So if there has been a secret meeting which the media isn't aware, then good, fair play. Because this... As much as this situation drags on, it's, so, it, it's very important for this situation to not drag on when it comes to media-wise. So again, I mean, there has to be, there has, there must have been a meeting between Mourinho and Korsdorp arguing and kind of making him rethink about everything. Because, I, I mean, he can't explain it otherwise. But again, if Korsdorp will then decide to re-escape from Mourinho, I'll be here to update you. But as things stand, Korsdorp is in Portugal, which makes you believe that he's probably going to get reintegrated in the team as things stand. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, quick update today. Transfer news. Uh, and obviously, we're getting closer to, the, to this Portugal tour, which is starting tomorrow. First friendly game tomorrow against Cadiz. Uh, we've got three friendly games. I'm going to go live. Live watch longs will be back. I'm going to cover these friendly games, but I'm only going to cover two out of the three friendly games. I'm going to cover Casa Pia and Valvik. I'm not going to cover Cadiz for the only reason being that I've got um, my school Christmas dinner tomorrow night. So, uh, yeah, Cadiz, no. Casa Pia live watch along. Valvik live watch along. And yeah, it'll be fun. We'll see how the team is, is getting back together. They'll be very fun live watch alongs. I'm, I'm sure. You don't want to miss them. But yeah, if you haven't already, please make sure 
to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, uh, and uh, obviously share the link of this channel with your families and friends, and let me know in the comments, more than just the Lukic situation, what you think has happened between Korsop and Mourinho to change plans so quickly. Also, uh, if you haven't, I, I mean, if you haven't, if you aren't aware of it, you can see it in the live chat box over there. Uh, you can click that link and watch a 60 second video uh, to try and win two tickets for the Roma against Salzburg game. It's the Christmas giveaway. All you need to do is follow the instructions in that video. On the 27th of December, I'm going to announce the two winners of um, for the two tickets for the Europa League game against Salzburg. I've received a lot of emails. It's tough. It's a tough job. It's very hard because I want to make everyone win, but I can't make everyone win. And uh, the justifications of why I should pick some of you are, are, are I mean, are, are good. Uh, it's going to be hard work. I have some ideas, but deadline isn't here yet. So you could win it as well if you're watching. In fact, I'll play the video right now. And uh, yeah, I will catch you tomorrow. Simon, out. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, happy Christmas and welcome to Roma Theory. As a Christmas giveaway 2022, I wanted to gift away two tickets for the Roma against Salzburg game in the second round of the Europa League. These are the dates. In order for you to win these two tickets, all you need to do is be subscribed to the Roma Theory channel, be subscribed to my second channel, link is in description. I've got some big plans ahead in the future for that channel. Smash the like button in this video and tell two friends to subscribe to the Roma Theory channel. Only when you've completed these four things, send me an email over at info.thesimonshow at gmail.com telling me your names, and why I should pick you to go and see the match in February. Now, I need two names, your name and the person you want to bring. So get your girlfriends, get your children, get your parents, anyone who you'd like to bring. I've got two tickets, you and someone else. Send me the names over at info.thesimonshow at gmail.com and the 27th of December, the winner will be announced. Good luck.